Hi guys, it's Max here. In today's video, we're going to be talking about lithium iron phosphate batteries. You might see these written on the internet as Life PO4. As you can see in front of me, I've got four different lithium iron phosphate battery options. We have three different voltages, we have four different form factors, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a bit of a higher level look at all the options that are out there so that you know what you can expect and what's going to make the most sense for you. Lithium iron phosphate batteries have some of the longest life cycles available. That's why in the vast majority of the kits that we offer, you'll find lithium iron phosphate battery banks in there. They make a lot of sense when it comes to solar systems or complete solar kits. A large portion of this video will be spent talking about the different form factors because if you want to get a large lithium iron phosphate battery bank, the weight can get up there. So that's why knowing the form factors and how that's going to play out can make a big difference for you when designing your system. We've also thought through all of this when it comes to shopsolarkits.com. So all of our kits have corresponding battery banks that kind of make sense in there. But yeah, let's jump into some of the discussions here about lithium iron phosphate batteries and the different form factors that they're offered in. Let's start by talking about this battery here. This is a 12 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate from a company called SOK. When you're thinking about batteries, this is probably what you've envisioned in your head, something that looks similar to this, maybe to a car battery. And yes, this is one of the most standard battery form factors, right? You've got your negative and your positive terminals, and you've got a roughly a rectangular shape. These batteries are great. There's always going to be a need for batteries like this. And so when you're designing a system, if you need only a 12 volt system, something like this is going to work perfectly. These tend to do really well in stuff like RVs and campers where you might already have a specific layout for where your battery bank needs to go and something like this will just slot right into place but give you double the amount of power an AGM battery would for example. If you're building any type of a larger system if we have to go to you know 24 volts or 48 volts this is where these batteries can become a bit of an issue. If you need to start connecting them in series to get up to 48 volts let alone if you need to get a larger battery bank, so maybe you have eight batteries to get a 48 volt system, then you need to really start thinking about the actual footprint that this is gonna to start to take up. So you have one here, one here, one here, one here, then you need to have four more, and all of a sudden, the actual footprint that you need is a lot bigger than anticipated. Not to mention, all the extra cabling that you're gonna need in order to connect your system together. Also, you've just created a bunch of other points of potential failure in your system with all the different terminals and different bus bars that you're gonna to need to use to connect the system up. That's where something like this can come in. A large all-in-one lithium battery bank, something like this, is gonna take up a lot less of a footprint when you start getting into bigger systems. These are some of our favorite battery options here at shopsolarkits.com. These larger all-in-one units like this, self-contained, make building a system quite easy. Also, systems that have an SB175 connector take out a lot of potential issues, especially with beginners. If you were to connect this unit, this is actually just a 24 volt unit here, but if you were to connect this to an inverter or this to a bus bar, all you do is take the SB175 connector, plug it in, the other end are ring terminals, and these will go to your bus bar, your inverter, however your system is set up. They're very user friendly and the amount of footprint that this takes up by going vertically as opposed to out is fantastic. We've already talked about how when you add more cabling, of course it does add cost, but it also adds potential points of failure. So if you can get a single battery that's obviously properly sized for your system, that's gonna be better or that's gonna be more ideal, uh, fewer points of potential failure. You can see why larger batteries like this are actually becoming so popular now. You can get a large system properly spec'd out with one battery. The ease of use can't be understated. Also, the larger units come with caster wheels on the bottom, so you're able to move it around very easily and just connect a single battery into your system. Now, let's talk about these two battery options. We have a server rack battery option and we've got a wall mounted battery option. Both are great and for different use cases. First off, both of these are quite large. They're just over five kilowatt hour batteries and they're 48 volts, which means that by themselves, they can power a decently sized system. However, one of these batteries is more easily expandable, while one of them is a little bit cleaner and depending on your footprint or where you're setting up your system, you might need to go with that option. So this battery here is a wall mounted unit. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to mount it onto the wall, but that is how it's designed. It comes with a very heavy duty steel wall mounting plate, lugs here to drill it into the wall and secure it properly, terminals, 
everything you're gonna need in order to physically mount this onto the wall. If your floor space is limited and you can't actually put anything on the floor, this might be the only battery option that you're able to go with. As you can see, there's two positive and two negative terminals. So this battery is already designed with the idea in mind that you will be able to add other batteries into your system. I will say, however, batteries like this, when mounted onto the wall, they aren't the easiest to add multiple batteries to. Because of the physical spacing that you need to have in between batteries, and where maybe you're gonna place your bus bars or your inverter, it can be difficult to add much more than two, maybe three of these batteries onto the wall together. It can get difficult to do that. However, these are huge batteries, tons of capacity, and if you don't have the required floor space, a unit like this is a fantastic option and is gonna work perfectly for you. So a form factor of battery that doesn't have the issue of expanding are server rack batteries. They're actually designed with the idea in mind that you'll be able to add and add and add batteries as your needs increase. Obviously, with a server rack battery, you're gonna to need to make the additional purchase of a server rack. It's not strictly necessary. However, if you're going server rack batteries, you really should make the extra purchase for the rack. Also, you're gonna to wanna to get a rack that has caster wheels on the bottom, or at least have the ability to add caster wheels onto the bottom of it so that you can kind of move your stack of batteries around. Server rack batteries are becoming extremely popular and for good reason. I mean, it really is easy to just slide in a new battery to your system as your needs increase. I will say that server racks have some of the same issues that we've seen with some of the smaller systems where each of these batteries individually needs to be connected with a set of cables to a bus bar. Therefore, you do have multiple points of failure again where a single large battery just eliminates all those issues together. I hope you found this video useful. I've done my best to go through all the different form factors of the batteries out there because there are a few and there's a lot to think about here. Again, at shopsolarkits.com, we have complete kits and we've done all this for you. If you wanna learn more about solar and batteries, you can also head to the Solar Hub, which I'll link below. There really is a place for each of these battery options out there. You just need to think through the system that you're designing and figure out which battery option is gonna make the most sense for that.